Angels are celestial beings that pique the interest of people, including those who are not Christians, with supernatural powers. They are responsible for protecting and guarding the lives of God's children and meeting their needs according to the Father's orders. The Bible, in the book of Hebrews, mentions the existence of thousands and thousands of angels in heaven, although only a few of them have their names revealed. Three of these names are known to many who study the scriptures, but the fourth name is little known. However, before exploring these four beings, it is important to clarify that angels are not spirits of people who have died. The claim that good people who die turn into angels of God is false. The Bible is clear in stating that we, humans, and angels do not belong to the same class of creatures as the Lord. Read with me what is written in Psalm 8. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. It is also important to highlight that among the celestial beings we will study are the fallen angels, who were expelled from heaven and cast down to earth. The first angel mentioned by the Bible by name is Satan. According to the first chapter of the book of Genesis, on the second day of creation, God created the heavens. Some scholars suggest that on this same day, the angels were created, and among them there was one that stood out for his beauty and power. This cherub is often called Lucifer by many people. Although we don't find this name in the Holy Scriptures, its meaning is Angel of Light or Morning Star. The story of Satan's fall is told in two chapters of the Old Testament, in Ezekiel chapter 28 and Isaiah chapter 14. He was a powerful angel full of wisdom, perhaps the most beautiful and splendid being created by God. This might have been a reason for great honor for this angel, but he was not content with all he had alongside the Lord, letting his beauty and high position in the celestial hierarchy get to his head. The Bible shows us in Ezekiel chapter 28 that Satan remained perfect in his ways until iniquity was found in his heart. See what is written. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. Because of his pride, Lucifer decided that he wanted to build his throne above God, and he convinced about a third of the angels to support him. There was then a battle in heaven, and the angels who remained on the Lord's side defeated those who rebelled. See what the Word of God says about this moment. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. The army of rebellious angels was not enough to overcome the celestial hosts. The losers were sent to the earth, hence the term fallen angels, and in the end times, they will be cast into the lake of fire in suffering for all eternity. Not satisfied with the defeat, Satan decided to destroy the human race, God's most perfect creation. So, we read in the book of Genesis that he disguised himself as a serpent, went to the Garden of Eden, and convinced Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge which had been forbidden by God. Thus, sin entered the world, and the couple lost intimacy with the Creator being expelled from paradise. Today, just as in the past, Satan does everything in his power to bring condemnation to human beings, diverting them from the path of salvation offered through the sacrifice of Jesus. The Bible says that to deceive the children of God, he is even capable of disguising himself as an angel of light. Second, Michael. The archangel is one of the most well-known and powerful angels of God. He belongs to a higher order among angels being a celestial being that acts as a messenger on special missions. Additionally, he is a great warrior. The book of Revelation chapter 12 shows us that he led the army of angels in heaven against Satan. Another passage that draws a lot of attention is in the book of Jude, which tells us that Michael fought against the devil for the body of Moses. 
Notice that, as powerful as he was, Michael showed wisdom by not reviling the enemy, but let God rebuke him. Let's read what is written. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. And in the book of Daniel, it is reported that God sent an angel to deliver a message to the prophet, but the prince of Persia, who was an agent of Satan, tried to hinder him. So God sent the archangel Michael to assist him. See what Daniel said about this event. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. This shows that Michael is one of the most powerful celestial beings. Third Gabriel If Michael is the angel of great battles, Gabriel is responsible for delivering important messages and missions that God entrusts to people. Just remember the Christmas stories we've heard since childhood. It was he who brought Mary the news that she would give birth to the Son of God. Gabriel also appeared to interpret Daniel's vision of a ram and a goat. Gabriel presented himself in the form of a man and explained that the vision was about the end times, representing future kingdoms. Later, this angel appeared again to Daniel, bringing understanding of his vision after he prayed for forgiveness for the sins of his people. See what the Bible says. While I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore consider the word and understand the vision. Many years later the angel appeared to the priest Zechariah when he was offering incense to God in the temple. Gabriel prophesied to Zechariah that he and his wife would have a son named John the Baptist, and that this son would be responsible for preparing the people to receive the Savior. Zechariah doubted the message, and as punishment for his unbelief, he became mute until the boy's birth. Six months after speaking to Zechariah, the angel Gabriel appeared to a young woman named Mary and said that she would become pregnant and give birth to the Son of God. Mary didn't understand, being still a virgin, but Gabriel explained that the Holy Spirit would come upon her. Now let's move on to the last named angel in the Bible, whom most people don't even know exists. His name is Abaddon or Apollyon. Abaddon or Apollyon are the Hebrew and Greek names that mean Angel of the Abyss. These names refer to destruction, and this angel is mentioned by the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 9 during the sounding of the fifth trumpet. Let's see what the Bible says about him. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it, like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss, and out of the smoke locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months, and the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days people will seek death but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. 
They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video that Lucifer lost the battle in heaven and was cast down to earth? Some theologians believe that Abaddon or Apollyon could be him, Satan himself. However, this theory is unlikely after all. Lucifer was not the only one who fell from heaven after the battle against God's army, right? So, in reality, this is another fallen angel who became the leader of a demonic horde ruling the abyss. But we must always remember that control over everything is in God's hands, amen? He determines the time of opening and closing of the abyss from which Abaddon or Apollyon appears as the ruler. This means that, in reality, God holds this key, but according to his divine purposes, the fulfillment of his plans, he temporarily gives this key to the devil to torment those who have not surrendered to Jesus Christ during the Great Tribulation. This explains why this angel is described as the king of the abyss in Revelation chapter 9. Like Satan and his other demons, Abaddon or Apollyon will also be defeated by Christ at the end of times and will spend eternity in the lake of fire in hell where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you enjoyed this message, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you.